Okay, welcome everyone to my continuation of what is representation theory. Today I would like to tell you about Lagrange's theorem or Lagrange's theorem for representations to be completely precise. So uh, of course, this is about some version of divisibility. I will remind you what Lagrange's theorem for groups is. But the point is somehow again, this kind of idea that a lot of properties from group theory are actually reflected in a somehow nicer way um, in representation theory. And this is one of the examples, pretty cute. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. So Lagrange's theorem, so here's my picture for Lagrange's theorem. I have my group D4 here, and um, D4 has certain subgroups, uh, quite a few of them. So here, for example, that's Z4. These are Z2 subgroups here, this is a trivial and so on. And the Lagrange theorem for groups says that the order of a subgroup always divides the order of the group. So here, this is eight. Uh, all of these are four, these are divisors of the order of the group, all of these are two, all of them divide, and of course one divides eight as well. Um, the question is, what is the analog of this in the world of representations in our beloved world? I don't know whether you like it, but for me it's certainly a beloved world of representations. And well, how to figure that out? Well, you just look at character tables, of course. Uh, so as usually, you can use the code linked in the description to uh, ask Magma and Magma will spit out this character code, uh, this character table for again, the same group of order eight. And you will observe, remember that in this uh, column, you'll see the dimensions of the simple representations here. So one, 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 two, and indeed all of them divide eight. Um, the only kind of slight catch here is that you might complain that this example is a little bit too too small. So a lot of ones here, a two, two divides almost everything anyway. So kind of half of all numbers if you want. So maybe this is a little bit uh, of a too small example. But of course the point is eh, not not really. So if you do a big example, and I did that, code is linked in the description. So don't look too closely at this table. It's of course a bit too big. But this group is already quite big. Um, so this is a these are the prime divisors of the order and it's SL2 over the field with seven elements. So if you would like to do the calculation, you will realize that uh, it's not so hard, it's not so trivial. And there's a close formula. <laughs> you will realize that it's of this order. You can also ask Magma if you want. So just uh, ask for the order of the group. Uh, it will spit out this number. Anyway, so this is the number we're looking at and you look at the character table. And again, here are the dimensions of the simple representations. And now actually really a miracle happens. So for example, there is no five here. So right, so five doesn't divide this number obviously. And indeed there is no dimension uh, five representation, which now you might believe is not an in coincidence anymore. And all of those representations, so eight divides this number, of course, eight goes very nicely here into two to the four, uh, six, two times three, seven, uh, seven appears and so on. Uh, so seems to work pretty nice and at this point, I mean, this is a pretty big group. At this point, you might think, yeah, well, hmm, probably this is not a coincidence anymore. And of course it isn't. Otherwise I wouldn't, uh, well, make this video probably. Uh, anyway, so the theorem is that indeed the dimensions of simple representations divide the orbit of the group. And actually you can do better. So let's look at two theorems. One of them kind of runs in parallel and one really is uh, a generalization or strengthening of the result. So actually the, the dimension of the simple modules divide um, the group. Uh, so the smaller number when you divide the group by the uh, order of its center. So for our example here, the center is actually of uh, size two. So, and it still works pretty well, right? So all of those numbers actually divide four, not just eight. So uh, you can do better. And these numbers are optimal. So you can always find groups where uh, really this is kind of the, uh, the best you can do. Another kind of nice fact here, kind of a version of Lagrange as well, um, the number of one dimensional representation also divides the order of the group. So here again, we have eight and we have indeed four one dimensional representation divides nicely in the order of the group. So kind of everything divides nicely everything, which is kind of a cool statement anyway. Um, and it has some nice consequences. So this div everything divides everything. You can use it to prove some non-trivial facts in group theory, right? It's one application of representation theory to group theory. So you can prove statements about groups without staying in group theory itself, just use representation theory. And I picked out two of them. Um, for example, let's have a look at the first one. So if you have a prime number and you wonder about groups of order 
p squared, so for example, four or nine or whatever the next one is, uh, 25 probably, uh, whatever. So uh, you wonder about what are the groups of those order, they are always abelian. That's a non-trivial fact. So why should be a group of order 25 be abelian? There may be a lot of groups of order 25, but this theorem tells you, well, they're not. And the way to prove it is kind of always the same. So you write down uh, the order of the group, you know, it's well, p, p squared in this example, you have certain simple representations and you already know that the squares of those uh, add up to G and you well know that there's one trivial representation and then you kind of uh, see that the numerics can't work out unless all of them are one. And if all uh, simple representations are of dimension one, then the group is a other. It's kind of always the same type of argument and the corollary and its proof here uh, is just one example of how you can use this Lagrange theorem. Okay, summarized Lagrange theorem for representations is actually a little bit nicer because you get this strengthening where you can get rid of the center of the group and the dimension of the representation, the simple representations divide actually the, the group divided by the center of the group. So um, in my D4 example, they all divide four. And there was also this nice statement about one dimensional representations, the number of them divides the order of the group as well. So it's pretty cool. So you can prove those fairly easily and then use them to get nice statements in group theory. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will hope to see you next time.